Happy Valentine's Day, Rex. I'm Captain Reality. And I learned to read. Hey guys, Rex here. Sorry, you're gonna like uh, get the goat hides and maybe the dog hides and uh, make strips out of them and uh, whip the women tonight. Is that what we're up to around here? So someone says, happy Valentine's Day, Rex. And the stuff that comes into my brain is not, not probably what's coming to your brain. You know why, man? Oh no, Rex is gonna do it again. Here he comes, he's gonna ruin another one. You can turn off your thing at any time. But as long as I'm on the rectangle of death right here, I am Captain Reality. Captain Reality, okay? I was raised by nuns in a parochial school where they would absolutely every day, taught by them, not by some lady who was teaching the thing for them, but taught by the priests and the nuns themselves, the history and the adoption of all these different rituals and how they were brought in to the mother church because, you know, we had to Christianize all these things. So you want to hear the story about Valentine's Day? Okay, man. So this will be a good conversation as you sit down for that ro romantic, because, hey, when in Rome, man, define romantic, romantic, right? When you get there and you eat a giant, huge lobster with a wife, all romantic, right? Uh-huh. So here we go. Um, there was a guy named Valentin one time, long time ago. And he, there was a number of different stories of what supposedly would happen. But like Valentin was kind of, you know, he, he appreciated the young lovers. And he didn't want them to have to get recruited into battle unfairly. So he kind of uh, bashed heads with the Roman emperor at the time, because that was the early days of Rome. And then after he got in trouble with some other things... And they had some disputes, and he was, like, helping the martyrs and stuff like this, who they were trying to torture to death. And Valentin was, like, a nice guy, you know? So he's, like, trying to do nice guy things. Well, they beheaded him. They beheaded St. Valentin. He became a saint later. And so, now, you can go visit, by the way, when in Rome, stop by, I think it's the uh, Church of the Santa Maria in the Cosmodine in Rome. And you can go into the crypt of the church on St. Valentine's Day with a bunch of other people to St. Valentine's skull. And it's in a nice box. It's got the nice velvet around it, all the Valentine colors. And you can be with St. Valentine's skull and you can have them, you know, intercess for you. You can pray uh, for St. Valentine to, you know, get extra special permission for you to have multiple things fixed. He's also the patron saint of beekeepers and all kinds of stuff like that, right? So like, and some of those things shift over time if you study the history of them. So, you know, that can change a little bit. So you can go check out the skull, man. And there's like other pieces, you know, they, were sh they shared. There's some fragments that like, so you might notice some parts are missing. So some of the fragments they shared with churches in Poland and some other places and the rest of his body, I think, because when they beheaded him, you know, he was torn to a million pieces. And they put him in churches all over the diff different places in Europe. You see, guys, if you didn't go to church in Europe, then you don't know what you're missing. Because American Christianity is brought to you by Hallmark and the chocolate companies. It's like way watered down. You don't know anything about church until you've been to Europe. When you go there, you will get the, the actual picture of how it was delivered to your ancestors up until like the 1930s when Americans wanted to make it into a corporate deal where they'd sell you candy. See, I'm not into this corporate stuff. I want the true heart of what's going on around here. So there you go. So that's what happened at St. Valentine. But the thing is, he was beheaded on February 14th, which is the day most of you would probably know who are in Rome all the time. That's the day right before Lupercalia. Which Lupercalia, right, is an ancient feast, which is like a real good time and is also like a mischievous, romantic kind of feast. Kind of like Valent Valentine was accused of doing, right, for helping out the young warriors to like stay 
with their, their lovers and stuff rather than getting recruited unfairly and some of the other things that he was accused of doing, which were actually all right. So Lupercalia was basically, I don't know if you remember uh, Romulus and Remus. Isn't that like the fathers of Rome, right? There's a, an ancient festival called Lupercalia where basically the order of Roman priests would gather uh, at a sacred cave where the infants Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, were to were believed to have been cared for by the she-wolf Lupa. Remember the heady, all the rock and roll songs Lupa? Yeah. You've been singing the whole time about Lupa. You didn't even know it. And the priest would then sac sacrifice like a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. Because nothing purifies like sacrificing a dog. A dog is the way to purify stuff in Rome. Okay. And then they'd strip the goat's hide into little strips and they'd dip them in the sacrificial blood to take to the streets. Gently, uh, you know, they'd go on the streets and on the farms and they'd hit the ground like, hey, let's like have a fertile ground around here some fertility, and then if the, the girls would walk by, and I'm talking girls, not what you would call women in America in 2023, like girls that are maybe kind of like not old enough, and they would kind of, you know, gently whip the girls with this fur against their skin, and that would help them to be fertile, because what was coming up later in the day, after they would do that, they'd be, you know, in, in the women, you know, the, the girls, you know, thought that was fun, they were included it was a festive practice. They would, later in the day, all the, the girls would put their names into an urn. And then all the little boys would go and reach into the urn. And depending on what Cupid had in mind, Cupid's mischievous matchmaking system, hitting them with arrows and helping guide their hand into this urn with all the names of the girls in there, by the way, Cupid, you know, that's the son of Venus and Mars. What did we just see last week? Super Bowl halftime show. Venus and Mars theme, inverted sexuality. Hmm, interesting. See, Mars was a female and Venus was the male. Hmm, weird how that works. And they're dancing around. They're dancing around on rectangles of death like this. A bunch of them. I'm sure it's normal. Don't worry about it, guys. Just watch more football. You ready to click off this video yet or not? Hank? Okay. Yeah. So they would, the boys would reach in there, Cupid would guide their hand, and then they would know who they got to, you know. So I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear or not, but here we are, man. That is the real dope.